please don't wake me up if, if I'm dreaming because I'm enjoying a lot. When you're having fun, you know, time flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would compare my dad as a, a wavy, stormy uh, sea with a lot of intensity and excitement and uh, a lot of uh, energy that, uh, that he's able to produce. And Mark is more of a, like a calm lake with clean water uh, up in the mountains. And uh, that's where we, we, what we're dealing with. And, it, and it's great to have both uh, worlds come together. Yeah. Did you expect to be so high so quickly? Um, not really. <laughs> I mean, he, he, I grew up so fast. Uh, I always said uh, the, the same. But uh, of course, to be uh, number two seed in, in a Master one, 1000 is it's amazing that uh, I didn't expect at the beginning of the of the year. Uh, uh, and honestly, I uh, can't believe it. So right now, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, something that I that I wanted when at the beginning of the year when I was a, a kid to, to be in the in, in the top and uh, of course to uh, to be one of the the favorite players to to win the the most uh, important tournament. Tommy Paul becomes just the fourth player to beat Carlos Alcaraz on the ATP Tour after losing the opening set. It's a third top ten win of the year for the American. It was the first time that, uh, that I couldn't handle the pressure. I felt the, the pressure to, to be number, uh, the, the, the number two seed in this kind of, of tournaments, number four in the world. I, uh, it was the first time that I felt that, that pressure and I couldn't handle it. Uh, all I can say from, from this match is uh, I have to uh, train uh, and I have to uh, be ready to to have this uh, this pressure, to have uh, this kind of of moments, and uh, to learn how to handle it. You know, I'm I'm happy that you know I'm giving everyone what they want. Kyrgios first met, but have second round. So, um. but I haven't really played, you know, great tennis in Montreal in, in the past. So. You know, I wanted to come out here today and just try and, you know, get that matchup. Obviously, playing Medvedev next is, is a great test, and he's obviously coming off a title as well. So it will be a lot of fun. But you know, I just I just wanted to create some good memories in Montreal. Wow. wins in his last 15 matches for Nick Kyrgios. He is a winning machine at the moment. Extends his head-to-head -head record over Daniel Medvedev. That's the third time he's beaten him now in four meetings. And it's the second time in his career that he's beaten a world number one. What did you learn about yourself in that match today? Um... You guys are acting like I haven't beat world number ones before or something. <laughs> like, I've done it before. Um, I've beaten Medvedev before. Um, I've beaten Roger, Novak, Rafa. Like, I feel like my confidence and my belief in myself is never short. Even if I could lose five matches in a row and I still believe that I have a chance to beat anyone. So, if I didn't show up today, I feel like I'd be doing a lot of people a disservice. Um, you know, that's what the sport needs. The sport needs matchups like this. And the sport, like, you look at the crowd, I'm, I'm pretty sure all the players were watching it. You know, it's, it's important that big players and iconic players show up to matches like this because it keeps the sport alive, I think. Yeah, it's a bit of a coincidence. I, obviously, she lives in Switzerland, not too far away from Ustad. And uh, we have a f friend in common, a Norwegian friend, who has uh, been helping me a little bit on you know, sponsorships and stuff. So he's really into music and have met up with uh, with her i'm not exactly sure how they met i think it was in like a 
jazz music festival or something in Switzerland. So, and they uh, just you know I I invited him for for the semis and finals last year, and he brought Shania and the husband. So <laughs> wow. so that was really surprising and fun to meet a big star like her. And I've been a, I was able to win you know in front of her two times. So uh, I think it's, yeah, it's a bit of a lucky charm and. We were having fun after this year's finals, saying that you know we should try to make this a tradition to have you know a celebration, lunch or dinner after after the final all together because I was you know back to back years. So that was really fun, and uh, I've, I cannot say that I know her really well, but uh, we've uh, got to know each other a little bit better, and um, she's a very nice uh, nice person. And I just watched her documentary actually on Netflix about her. Uh, her career and her life, and uh, it was it was inspiring to see. Well, you know, Shania Twain is not impressed by much. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but maybe back to back is not too bad uh, in, in Gestalt. So I don't know. Maybe I have to ask her. <laughs> Before Australian Open, I, I really decided that I wanted to train really hard and and have a really good year. I kind of wanted to invent myself um, a bit more this year. You know, I kind of wanted to remind everyone that you know. I'm I'm a really good tennis player and I can I can I can still play at the top level and win tournaments. So, um, you know, as of right now, I just want to keep going with my good habits and and just keep playing tennis. energy from the crowd as well it was such a fantastic atmosphere tonight your friends are here family are here as well was it hard to you know control yourself emotionally yeah I work on that a lot so I feel like I was able to replicate uh, you know my composure from other tournaments to here but definitely you know the crowd here adds something special you know I don't get that anywhere else Pack stadium you know everybody's on their feet trying to trying to support me it's real special you know I'm uh, it's really my hometown I live, you know, when my parents live 10 minutes from here, so uh, it's quite special to, to play here every time, and that's why I'm so, I'm just so happy tonight that I could get the win. Great player. Um, I think he's so important to the sport. I think, you know, he, you look at him and he's a very marketable person. He's got, you know, a great personality. Um, you know, the way he plays tennis is very exciting, and obviously he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a young man who's extremely confident in himself, and I think the sky's the limit for someone like him. I think he's one of the special ones who can do some amazing things and, and he's, he's larger than tennis. I think his impact can be more than just the tennis world. Kasper Ruud has had his bathroom break quite a, quite a way from this court to the, the locker room, of course. So we heard Fergus Murphy say, yeah, your five minutes starts now. The, so between the opening set. Yeah, but you have to go to the bathroom as well. I know, I know. That's the rule. Yeah. Do, I do? do it on the court or? No, no, you do both. It's called a bathroom break. Yeah, I know that. But it's the the rule is covered by the bathroom break rule. You can change your clothes and if you're going to the bathroom. I just take my Yeah, you have to go to the bathroom when you say you're going to the bathroom. I didn't say I was going to go to the bathroom. No, no, I the said whole, I was going to change. Yeah, no, I know. I, I heard that. My socks, my underwear, yeah. my shorts, my t shirt that is covered by the bathroom break rule. Okay, the next time I think I'm going to go to the bathroom. Well, just I just go, go inside to the bathroom. You have to go and go to the bathroom. That's your business. But when you don't go, I have to give you a warning for not going. That's why I'm explaining it now. And the warning is what? $3,000 fine? I have no idea about that. <laughs> Time. Uh, okay, so yes, he's just been warned for, for not going to the bathroom. <laughs> Congratulations, you're the first player from Quebec to play in the quarterfinals here in Montreal. A proud moment, I think, for everyone here, but for yourself as well. 
No problem and for myself, uh, going one step further already than I did three years ago. And, uh, you know, people, Montreal, like Montreal people, French Canadians are really proud people. You know, we're from, uh, we're a small community in the world and uh, we support each other in everything we do, especially, you know, in professional sports. And I think, you know, whenever you see an athlete coming from, from the province of Quebec, you know, to, to do big things on the, on the world stage, people are very proud. So it makes me, uh, it makes me proud uh, to be in that position for sure. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. Uh-oh. Oh, Gael. Not only the limping, but the wincing is not a good sign. Oh, it does not look good. What this injury is, but it is obvious that Gael is in significant distress. Oh, no. He's done. Yeah, I think his team made the wise choice in counseling him that this is just not going to be worth. There's still half of a season to go. There's a lot of time to play. Why jeopardize? Make some big noise in Montreal. Oh, definitely, but you've got to feel for Monfils, who has been through so much. I mean, to the quarterfinals, but I'm sure this is not the way you would have wanted the match to end. Yeah, no, I know what it's like to do an ankle. I did mine last year really badly, so I just hope Gail's all right. Um, and I wish him all the best for the rest of the season. I guess to be in the quarterfinals is nice myself, but it's never how you, how you want to win a match. Yes, an all-British semi-final still on the cards. How much would you want for Jack Draper now to follow you into the semi-final tomorrow? I, I, I do want him to win, obviously, but uh, he's playing pretty well and um, he'll have many more nights, so... Uh, no, listen, I, w I want him to win, of course, and it'd be amazing for British tennis. I'm not fond of playing left-handers, so if he doesn't get through, so be it. But no, good luck to him. And uh, listen, he's going to be, he's a great talent and he's going to be the future of British tennis on the men's side. Um, and there's looks like there's something about qualifiers on, in Britain and uh, North America, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's the nightmare start to the second set for Hubert Hercatch. And... I mean, you know what's going on, he's got to fight. He's got to fight. You just have to fight. You know, you, know, you know what's going on. Come on. Push back. It's a second Masters 1000 final for Hubert Hercatch. For the fourth time this week, he comes through on a deciding set. Congratulations, Hubie. This didn't look so good about an hour into the match. And thanks to our new microphones that we got in the coaches' boxes, we heard Craig Boynton say to you, you've just got a fight and you seem to take that to heart. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to stay in the game and Kasper was playing really incredible tennis and, uh, you know, he was a better player at the beginning, especially for the you know, set and a half. I was just trying to, to stay in the game and uh, to hold on to compete as, as good as I can. And then fight. Yeah, definitely <laughs> just, just fight and, uh, you know, just, uh, just, just do your best. Pablo Carreno Busta busts through as conqueror of Montreal and can now lay claim to being a Masters 1000 champion. Viva España! Well, he got off to the best start possible when he began his campaign in Montreal. Oh, 
an amazing feeling to, to be a Master 1000 winner. Uh, it's the, the best title of my career for sure and you know, uh, I don't know how I'm feeling in this moment. Uh, I know that uh, during all the week we work very, very hard also the weeks before. Uh, it's very important to be very positive all the time. It's uh, not my best uh, season this year, but uh, I lost some matches that probably other seasons uh, I didn't lose. But, you know, I just try to be, to continue feel, uh, believing on my, on my team, on myself and on my game. Our champion of Spain, Pablo Carreño Busta. I wanted to congratulate Pablo. I mean, he was playing really unbelievable throughout this uh, whole week and he deserved to win this title. I mean, after so many years, you got the, the biggest title of your career, so uh, you should be proud of yourself and congrats to your team as well. well please don't wake me up if, if I'm dreaming because I'm enjoying a lot. I would like to say thank you to my team, uh, Luna, Juanjo, my father, uh, for supporting me and give me the confidence and give me the power this week to, to be at 100% from the best match until the last one.